Okay, so today we're going to try to connect our uh, Corsair H110i um, cooling apparatus to our CPU. Uh, that, this is a first for me, so I've never done this before. I have a little bit of trepidation. I want to make sure that I do this right. Um, now, as far as I know, there's some thermal compound that's already on here. I don't see any indication in the documentation that we need to apply thermal paste. So that's my first approach. I'm not going to apply any thermal compound. Um, I have this little uh, wrench. Now, if you remember back in one of my earlier videos when I connected the back plate, um, I'm touching everything to make sure I'm grounding myself before I go and touch the motherboard. Touching a screw is actually a fairly safe thing to do. Um, and of course, right now I'm really just touching this. Um... Now, one thing you can see this back plate, and this, this kind of bothers me a little bit. As I um, turn this, there's a lot of play here. Um, and this bothers me a bit. Um, so the question is, did I do something wrong? Um, you know, should there be that much play in these little posts that are here? Okay, so you can see that they're they're jiggling quite a bit there. So that, um, I've already done, you know, try to uh, tighten them down a little bit. So if you take this and you try to tighten it down a bit, you'll see that really things are just spinning there. Okay, so that's a little bit concerning to me. Um, so pause it. Okay, so here's the back of, of the motherboard and here's the back plate. I'm, I'm grounding myself outside here first. And so this is what it looks from the back and you can see that there's there's a little bit of play here. Um, we're not getting a good tight fit. And so I'm gonna, basically I'm gonna be, the first thing I'm gonna be doing is trying to see, well, can I make this tight? Because I, I thought it was a little bit tighter initially, but I only really finger tighten things. So when you finger tighten things, you get a, a different sense. Um, you know, theoretically, if you can push this in and out when everything is connected, um, you know, it might push off the, uh, even though like, everything is locked down, it's really only locked down to this back plate. And, uh, you know, theoretically you could push the apparatus off the CPU and then you'd have to reapply it. And the only way you're going to know this is your CPU would start overheating. So my main goal right now is to see if I can get this to be a little bit tighter before I continue. Okay, so a little bit of a read of the documentation. And uh, my concern was that with the MSI Z170A Pro Carbon and the Corsair H110i uh, mounting bracket, there is a little bit of play even after you tighten things down. If you try to tighten things down even more, um, really, things just spin, so it's it's not the it kind of gives you a little bit of a disconcerting uh, feeling. Um, anyway, so according to the documentation, there will be some play, which means that when you press on the back of the the mounting bracket, you know you you have the potential to dislodge the cooling apparatus from the CPU once you're all done. So just be aware. Um, so don't be jostling things around too much. Once you get things into place, you're going to want to tighten them down and leave them there. Once, If you do need to remove the cooling apparatus at a la later time, then you certainly can press on those the uh, back plate and that'll be one way you can dislodge it. Okay, so we're about ready to attempt to connect our Corsair H110i uh, uh, cooling apparatus a little bit annoying how these little fan things maybe I should have uh, uh, connected them first but what we're going to do is we're simply going to pop this off this is there's theoretically some thermal paste here so we don't want to be um, getting too much uh, trouble here so this operation we want to kind of Get this done as quickly as possible and of course it comes down to how do you do this especially when you're a noob this is not an easy task to do so it's a question of how do you actually get this to reach i think that's probably how it's going to work and if you can notice this can go right down here i think that's going to fit there are a couple what look like maybe capacitors or i'm guessing those are capacitors right down there so can we get a good fit there, or are we going to end up, do I have to jostle this around? If I do this, I'm not, I'm losing my reach. I'm going to probably try to do this. 
So I have a feeling that I'm going to hit those capacitors. As you can see, there's really not a lot of space there around the CPU. And uh, especially if you're a noob, this is a this is not an easy task to do. Now, the other possibility is I fl flip this thing around and I have this apparatus coming around here. But at that point, I'm going to have to apply thermal paste because I'll have to clean everything up. So I'm going to make the first attempt here. So like I said, this is not an easy task, especially for a noob. I'm not sure how pros feel when they deal, deal with stuff like this because this is a um, kind of an awkward task. And I'm going to put this down first. And let's just see. Okay, so that, that kind of fits in nicely. And then we're just going to be essentially doing this. And I think it feels like it's in place. Now I'm just applying some light pressure here to make sure that um, that uh, it doesn't. It's hard to tell if it's resting on those capacitors or whatever those components are there. Um, I'm just going to once again lightly tighten first. I know that if I over tighten these things. You really can't over tighten. This is really a finger tightening uh, job, especially those standoffs that are there. Um, they, you know, it's not designed to be a tight, super tight fit. Um, and uh, so finger tightening seems to be the, the best way to deal with this. Um, I might use a little bit of a screwdriver, but I'm really not going for optimal uh super tight uh and you really you're always for the most part going for snug but especially on this um these are definitely not designed to be tightened down uh more than just securing things so we're going to do that and of course the real test here is when we do a new smoke test which we're going to do um, once we get the cables reconnected, we're going to try to do a minimal smoke test and get things into BIOS. And then we're going to see whether we're successful or not. Because basically we'll know we're successful if our CPU temperature has moderated. Because if you remember, without the cooling apparatus, it doesn't take long at all. And your CPU temperature can get up to the boiling point, which is incredibly hot. Uh, not good for your CPU, and I imagine it stays at the boiling point and doesn't go over because at that point, I bet you the CPU is self-regulating and turning turning different things off so that it doesn't overheat. So obviously it's not a good thing. You have to, the um, Intel uh, i5 6600K needs to have a cooling apparatus or it will not function properly. It will just basically overheat at a normal ambient temperature of 75 Fahrenheit. So there we are. Okay, so we have kind of a mess of um, fan connectors all hanging, hanging all over the place. What I really want to do is I want to connect the, um, this is a SATA power connector for the, uh, for the Corsair uh, cooling system. And then there's this little CPU uh, regulator. We're gonna connect that, but there's so much else going on here I just want to get some of the uh, cables out of the way. Um, so once again, this is um, just this is just for this fan back here, which is uh, um, I'm not sure if this is an exhaust fan or an intake fan, but uh, we'll find that out later. Uh, but mainly, I'm going to just try to start connecting these just so I get them out of the way. And if I can see, I'm kind of okay. So I think I can put this guy right here. So that guy is in there. And then I have this fan coming from the Corsair. Uh, you know, for, for the regular fans, I'm just going to um, connect them to the SIS fan. Um, so right here, this is not a CPU. Well, this is for, for the CPU. So it's a good question whether or not I should uh, 
see if it's got it going this way. Okay, so I think I got that just about right. Okay, so that's one. I'm, right now I'm using the sys fan for that one. Um, there's a CPU fan. I think it makes sense for me to connect this guy to the CPU fan, so I'm going to do that. Um, these have little guides on them. Of course, I'm getting in my light here. What I'm really trying to do is just connect it to this uh, fan heading up here. And if you look closely at it, it is only a three prong and it, it looks like it only is gonna be regulating how fast the cooling system is gonna run. Let's see if I can get this in with the light angle that I got. I'm gonna to have to change the light angle because that's one of the problems I have here. Can you stop? Okay, so I changed the lighting here just because I couldn't see once I get in there and that's kind of dangerous. I don't want to be bending any pins. Um, so I'm going to try to just put this all the way back. But as you can see, the, it's kind of hard to get to. Um, my fingers are not long. Use too many hands here. I'm going to be blocking the light. want to be a klutz and bend the pin. The sys fan pins, well the, the fan pins are pretty sturdy, but when you can't see anything, it makes for a difficult build. Are you pausing? Or? Okay, so we're still trying to get this uh, CPU fan one connected around there. My fingers are too short. My knuckles are running up against the. Uh, um, this, I think this is a heat sink right here. So it's making it kind of difficult. This guy, of course, is very tightly uh, attached. This is a SATA connector. This should be. I can probably run a SATA connector up from here pretty easily. It's just really a matter of me getting my fat fingers here. And of course, I'm just very, uh... Okay. So it looks like it only goes on one way. I was trying to get it on that top pin there. It does not want to go on that top pin, but it will happily go on to the lower three pins. So that's one thing done. Then I have this other uh, fan from the... Uh, from the Corsair fans up here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna also attach that to the sys fan, uh, one of the sys fan headings, um, and we'll see if that works. I don't know if I'll have to change that later. So I'm gonna go with this sys fan. If I can. Okay, so that sys fan is on. So I'm using the sys fan uh, headings for uh, both of the Corsair. Um, fans that are pulling in through the cooling apparatus. We still have this uh, needs to be SATA connected. I don't know what to do with this yet. I need to read up on that. But it's starting to look a little bit clearer because now we have the fan connectors going somewhere. So um, that leaves us with this. Now I have, of course, I'm using SATA for uh, the the disk drives, and I haven't really figured out which cables I'm going to use yet. Um, so that'll be the next step. Okay, so to connect power to the uh, Corsair H110i, uh, we have this little SATA connector here. And uh, I'm going to basically go into one of the Type 4 connectors down here. Uh, where it says peripheral and SATA, I can just take one of these, uh, take one of these guys one of these type 4 connectors. This is my regular SATA connector that I would use for my disk drives. Then it's really just a matter of how to efficiently do this. I have an optical drive. I also need the power. And I think if I, I think I can work it so that 
I can use this one cable to power my uh, optical drive as well as my um, as my course here. Here, we'll see how that works. Let's see which direction I have to put this on. Okay, so that's good. So I can basically connect in the Corsair pump here, so the Corsair pump has power, and then I'll be routing this up to the optical drive, um, and I'll do that connection in a later video. Okay, so I was wondering what these um, are, and a little quick read of the documentation. These are little extra power connectors, so connect the fans to the included fan header wires coming off the pump. So this is actually pretty good because I had chosen to connect the Corsair fans uh, to the SysFan 3 and I think uh, one of the other SysFan, SysFan 1, and that's probably not the best thing in terms of how to regulate this anyway. So this keeps everything regulated off of the Corsair cooling apparatus, which makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to disconnect this now. It's just a matter of how do I uh, connect this properly. Let's see how easy it is to get this guy to... So it looks like it's pretty... Of course, this is a lot easier than connecting to the motherboard because you can actually see what you're doing. And uh, now I just take the other one, take this guy here, and connect it into the other one. So that this, so it's pretty, pretty nice. It's pretty well uh, self-contained. If you were running out of uh, SysFan uh, headings there, uh, this frees up two of them. So that's great. So that's uh, nicely out of the way, and, and it takes away some of my concerns about. How are these going to reach the motherboard? That's the last set. Okay, so we're to the eighth step here. We're going to connect the pump to the USB header. Now, uh, this is kind of difficult now because everything is mounted inside here. Um, and I, this, of course, there's always a question of which way do we put it in? Do we put it in this way or do we put it in this way? And you almost cannot see, but if I come over here to this angle, I can see that. Um, it's actually going to go in this way, so we're going to have to do a little cable management here. Um, so hopefully I can just do this and get this to go in easily. Get a little bit blind, but okay, that's good. So that goes in nicely. Then it's just a matter of, you know, where do we go for the USB? There's JUSB 1 and 2. They're down here. So I'm going to be using one of these, which corresponds here. Now, I have a little trepidation around USB connectors because they're a little bit easy to bend. Now, it is keyed if you look closely. This little guy here is, uh, you can't plug it in that way. So, and if I come down here, I can see that uh, basically there's no pin right there. So that's what I'm aiming for. Uh, these USB connectors are easy to bend, a lot easier to bend than the fan connectors because they're just finer connections but that does seem to go in nicely so at that point I think we're just about done we'll see how much more we have left to do here but oh this is AMD so I think we're good